Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have Yasek Yawarik. This is a man who's on the run because of the horrible crimes he committed in July of last year. He took the lives of three people who were a part of his own family. One of the family members was able to escape this horrific nightmare and was able to make it safely to the neighbor's house where they could call the authorities for help. Since these horrific crimes, he has gone missing and no one is sure of his whereabouts. Right now it is speculated that he likely escaped from Poland where the crimes took place, but his exact whereabouts remain quite the mystery. In our number 9 spot today, we have Victor and Natalia Wolf. We've got a two for one on this one, a husband and wife team like Bonnie and Clyde who are on the run for their alleged involvement in a massive real estate scheme. Of course, it's not a new idea to buy real estate for cheap and then sell it for more than you purchased it for, but these guys decided to go one step further and skip that whole first part. They wouldn't even buy the properties, they just sell them. They targeted immigrants mainly and what they would do is drop fake ownership documents for properties and then basically just sell them even though they obviously had no legal right to do that. By doing this, the pair was living in a lap of luxury. They had fancy jewelry, luxury cars that included a $350,000 Maybach. They were living out their dream, but this was back in the early 2000s and everything changed when the housing bubble burst. In the end, the pair was indicted by a grand jury in 2011, but by then it was too late. The couple had fled and no one has been able to locate them since. They are said to have had ties in Florida, Arkansas, Texas, and New York, but authorities think that they might just be living in Russia. In our number eight spot today, we have the Beer Man. This is the surprisingly low key name given to the unidentified serial killer who took the lives of at least six people in Mumbai, India between October 2006 and January of 2007. It's a lot of people in a very short amount of time. The reason this unidentified monster is called the Beer Man is due to one fact about each crime scene, which ended up being how they linked these crimes together in the first place. This was the presence of beer bottles that were found scattered next to each of the bodies that were found. Of course, it's been over a decade since the crimes were committed, so it's definitely upsetting that this person hasn't been caught yet. Mumbai police have investigated and interviewed hundreds of people, but still haven't quite collected the evidence they need Need to be certain of the suspect. In our number 7 spot today, we have Joseph McCool. So, Joseph was one part of a scheming trio. He, along with two other men named Cameron Campbell and Donald Manning, formed a company called Brixen Group. This group was built on promising a pretty stellar deal where an investment would guarantee you a 10% return per month and that it was risk free because the money was actually insured by the State Bar of California. And not only this, but also this money would be lent to countries that were experiencing war in Eastern Europe so that they would be able to purchase refrigerators for citizens who were impoverished. Wow, that's quite a deal, isn't it? I don't know, something about it seems too good to be true, but maybe that's because I know what happens next. Of course, in 2006, it turns out that a grand jury indicted the three men because, well, I mean, there were no fridges, there was no insurance as promised, and of course, there was no monthly return, 10% or otherwise. Both Cameron and Donald pleaded guilty to their charges of fraud and conspiracy, and they served their time for their crimes. But not good old Joe. No, of course, that guy has to flee and just disappear into the wind. Some authorities believe he may be hiding in Europe, while others believe he may be in the Philippines. In our number six spot today, we have the Honolulu Killer. This is another one of those pesky, horrifying, unidentified serial killers who, of course, was active in and around Honolulu, Hawaii. These crimes took place in 1985 and 1986, and throughout those years, it is said that whoever is responsible for these crimes took the lives of at least five women. The women seemingly didn't have any connection to each other as they were from all different walks of life, but because of the gruesome similarities of each crime, authorities were able to determine that they were likely committed by the same person. Despite the years it's been, the perpetrator has never been identified and could still be out there somewhere, hiding from taking responsibility for their actions. In our number 5 spot today, we have John and Julianne Dimitrion. Back with another husband and wife team, this pair were mortgage brokers turned fraudsters. They were last seen in July of 2010, which was just before they were set to appear in a federal court in Honolulu to face the consequences of their schemes, which they had previously pled guilty to. Basically, the pair had another 
company called Mortgage Alliance, and this company would target homeowners who were in trouble and facing things like foreclosure. The pair would offer to purchase their homes and help repair their credit. They claimed that they would invest the funds, but rather than doing this, they instead kept the money for themselves to fund their expensive hobbies, which included collecting things like high-end electronics, airsoft replica firearms, and designer purses, shoes, and lingerie. At least they were using their money responsibly. You can tell that they just really needed it, which I respect. The pair has, of course, been on the run for over a decade now, which means that they truly could be anywhere, and authorities have received tips of their potential whereabouts from all over the world. Currently, there is a $10,000 reward that the FBI is offering for any information that leads to their arrest. In our number four spot today, we have Jason Derrick Brown. This piece of work has been missing ever since November of 2004. That's quite a long time, but that doesn't mean authorities are giving up looking for him. Jason fled from Phoenix, Arizona in that year after he allegedly took the life of an armored car guard who was outside of a movie theater. After committing this horrific crime, he then took the money and ran. On the FBI website, where it details his crimes as well as other things about him and who to contact with any information, gives like a little bio on Jason, and in it, it says that he enjoys being the center of attention and that he clearly likes showing off his luxurious lifestyle. It's crazy how many of these people who are known for like trying to flaunt their actually stolen lifestyle. It's just wild. Another thing that the website reminds us of is that he should be considered armed and extremely dangerous. So. Just be careful out there. In our number three spot today, we have the I-70. This is the name of what is believed to be an unidentified serial killer who is known to have taken the lives of six store clerks in the Midwest in the spring of 1992. The reason he is referred to as the I-70 killer is because most of the stores were just a few miles off of Interstate 70. While most of his victims were women, there was one man, but it is believed that he may have been expecting a female employee. The killings were clearly the main objective of his crimes, considering the fact that at each scene there was only a small amount of cash that was taken. Aside from these initial six crimes, it is thought that he also might be responsible for the deaths of three more store clerks in Texas in 1993 and 1994, as well as one more in Indiana in 2001. This story has been featured on episodes of Unsolved Mysteries, America's Most Wanted, and Dark Minds, but despite this, whoever is responsible has never been identified. In our number two spot today, we have Victor Garena. Back in September of 1983, Victor was 25 years old and was a trusted employee of the West Hartford, Connecticut Wells Fargo Express Company, but on September 12th, that all changed. After working throughout the day and completing the scheduled rounds of currency collection from the local banks, Victor held his co-workers hostage before tying them up, handcuffing them, and injecting them with a mysterious substance he claimed would leave them unable to move. After doing this, Victor proceeded to take about $7 million, which was one of the largest cash robberies in US history at the time. His co-workers were later able to get themselves untied and they called authorities, but by that time, Victor was gone. They found his car, but it had been abandoned and of course, the money was gone. They later found out that Victor was a part of a larger group who had orchestrated this entire thing and they also found out that part of the money was used to purchase a surface-to-air missile that was later launched at FBI headquarters in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Thankfully, it turned out to be a huge huge waste of money because it did little damage and fortunately no one was injured. Two years later there were 14 people who were arrested in Puerto Rico, Massachusetts and Texas as they were found to be involved in the entire operation, but Victor once again escaped capture and has not been seen since. In our number one spot today we have Glenn Stewart Godwin. Man, this guy definitely has quite the history. So basically, in 1980, Glenn was working in California and didn't really have too much of a criminal record. For some reason, he and his roommate, however, decided to make a plan to rob someone that they knew who was once a friend of theirs. Of course, things go awry and it turns into a botched robbery and Glenn ends up taking the life of the person that they were robbing. Also, this isn't necessarily important to what we are talking about today, but it's just so unhinged I couldn't leave it out. In an attempt 
attempt to destroy the evidence, Glenn tried to blow up the crime scene. The explosive went off, but obviously they were still able to figure out who committed the crime. Both Glenn and his roommate were both tried and convicted for the crimes in 1983. This of course is not where the story ends however. In 1987, Glenn tried to escape prison and failed, and this landed him at a higher security prison, Folsom State Prison, which is actually a maximum security prison. Somehow, once at this new one though, he attempted another escape, and this time was successful. He fled to Mexico, where he tried unsuccessfully successfully to be a part of an illegal drug trade. He was arrested again and sentenced in Mexico, and this is when American authorities began the process of trying to get him extradited. During this process, Glenn decided that it would be a brilliant idea to take the life of an inmate who was a member of the Mexican drug cartel, which very obviously slowed the process of extradition. This gave him time to plan another escape, which he did in 1991, and since then, he has been on the run. So starting us off on this list, so number 10, we have Harif Saeed. Well, Saeed is the co-founder of the militant group Lashkari Taba and the chief of Jama'ut Dawa. Well, there has been a bounty of 10 million USD since 2012. So if you find him or, and capture this guy, you can be rewarded $10 million. Well, this bounty was placed on him after he had a role in the 2008 Mumbai attacks that caused 164 civilians to lose their lives. However, he claims that he had nothing to do with the attacks. And he laughed at the bounty that is out for him, stating, I'm living my life in the open and I might be somewhere in the US. I'm here in front of everyone and I'm not hiding in a cave. Pretty damn terrible terrifying if you asked me. In our number 9 spot today we have the River City Ripper. One of the most terrifying things that exists are serial killers who are still on the loose, especially when you find out that they've been recently active. This serial killer is wanted in connection to four different incidents that occurred in Little Rock, Arkansas, three of which were fatal. These horrific crimes took place between August of 2020 and April of 2021, and despite one of the victims thankfully surviving the attack and being able to provide a description of the assailant, there is still very little to go on in terms of being able to identify this horrible human. The FBI was contacted shortly after the survivor was able to give a testimony to authorities, and their behavioral analysis team created a profile of this unidentified killer. These crimes are terrible any way you spin them, but one of the most terrifying parts is that they were all just completely random acts of violence that occurred just unprovoked. The case has gained quite a bit of attention, but still, the monster remains at large. In our number 8 spot today, we have Ruja Ignatova. This woman is a convicted fraudster who has been on the run since 2017 after she disappeared when she was found out to be the founder of a Ponzi scheme. The scam, known as OneCoin, which was a scam that was surrounding cryptocurrency, has been referred to as one of the biggest scams in history. US prosecutors have claimed that the scheme was so huge, it brought in approximately $4 billion worldwide. Ruja had impeccable timing as she disappeared right at the time that there was a secret US warrant being filed for her arrest. Despite being on the run since 2017, in 2019 she was charged in absentia by US authorities for wire fraud, securities fraud, as well as money laundering. This lady is living the real life Ozark. It's absolutely insane. This case truly is something you'd expect to see on TV but she's just living it. Despite the years it's been, international authorities are still doing their best to find out where she has been hiding, and this includes raids that have happened just this year. In our number seven spot today, we have the vending machine killer. Okay, so for this one, we have to know that apparently, there are a lot of vending machines in Japan. Like it's said that there's one for every 23 people. It's a lot of vending machines. So in 1985 in Hiroshima, there were 12 people who passed away and 35 people who were seriously injured from being poisoned with a chemical herbicide. When the string of poisonings were investigated, authorities realized that they had one thing in common, and that was the fact that they had all had the same drink shortly before falling ill. So around the time of this whole thing, there was a company that had launched a marketing campaign where they gave a free drink with every purchase made from a vending machine. When people didn't want their free drink, they would leave it on top of the vending machine for the next person who came along, which is super nice and thoughtful and kind, and of course that means that some horrible person out there had to ruin it for everyone. So as it turns out, someone was taking these drinks, lacing them with poison, and then leaving them on top of the machines for some random stranger to come around, drink it, and then be sick or unfortunately pass away. It is almost impossible for authorities to be able to track down whoever was doing this, because you have to narrow down where the person picked up the drink, and in 1985 there weren't as many 
many CCTV cameras as there are now. So unfortunately, whoever was responsible for a mass poisoning of strangers is still out there somewhere. In our number six spot today, we have Yan Marcelek. Yan is said to be a white collar criminal who fled and went into hiding in June 2020 after the Wirecard scandal, as he was the COO of the company. If you're unfamiliar, Wirecard was a German payment processing firm that had years and years of allegations of malpractice against them. The entire thing really came to a peak in 2019 when the Financial Times published some of the investigations into the complaints as well as internal documents. In the end, in 2020, Wirecard filed for insolvency after it was realized that 1.9 billion euros were missing. If anyone finds that missing $1.9 billion, my DMs are wide open. It is believed that Yan is one of the main culprits in the entire scandal and, to be fair, fleeing the country doesn't really make you look very innocent. It is believed that he may be located in Russia now, but since August of 2020, Interpol has issued a red notice for him, which requests that worldwide law enforcement be on the lookout for him in order to arrest him, where he can then be extradited. In our number 5 spot today, we have Bible John. This is the name used in reference to an unidentified serial killer who was responsible for Scotland's largest manhunt. All three of his victims were young brunette women between the ages of 25 to 32, and they had all met him at the Barrowland Ballroom, which was a dance and music venue in Glasgow. Despite this important information, he has never been able to be identified. This was actually the first time in Scotland in which the Crown Office authorized the publication of a composite drawing of the man who was suspected of the crimes. The reason he is called Bible John is said to be because he apparently repeatedly quoted the Bible, which is, I don't know, just really creepy. Most of the key information in the investigation came from one of the victim's sisters, Jean Langford, who had been in the same taxi as her sister and the suspected killer on the night he took her life. She was able to give a description of the man and was able to give information that helped authorities create a profile of him. Despite her incredibly helpful information, he was never able to be caught and Jean passed away in 2010. While Bible John might have also passed away by now, I still hope that one day authorities can figure out who he was. In our number 4 spot today, we have Monica Witt. Monica is a former United States Air Force technical sergeant as well as a defense contractor who has been on the run since 2018. Despite her high ranking position and high security clearance, she is on the run because she defected to Iran in 2013. It is said that from 2013 up until she was found out that she was using her position in order to spy on the United States and relay that information back to the group she was working for. She used different fake Facebook accounts and it is said that the information she gave included the classified true name and counterintelligence activities of a US intelligence operative. This is of course a problem regardless of how important this operation was, but it is said that this information she shared had the potential to cause serious damage to the United States national security. It is an absolutely wild story and Monica is still out there on the run hiding from the consequences of her betrayal and espionage. In our number 3 spot today, we have John Pyle. This horrible human isn't an undercover spy or insane fraudster. He is just a monster who committed certain crimes that are, unfortunately, a little more common than any of us would like to know. Because of the nature of his crimes, I can't talk about them here in this video, but let's just say that he is definitely one of the worst kinds of criminals out there. On June 24th, 2016, authorities searched his home after receiving three tips relating to his crimes. The amount of and the severity of the incriminating evidence they found during this search ended up landing him charged with 30 different second degree felonies, which could bring a sentence of 450 years in prison. He was arrested the same day and posted a bail bond of $90,000. Why he was able to get bail, I'll never know. And he also had to surrender his passport. Flash forward 16 months to October 23rd, 2017, and of course, this guy doesn't show up for his hearing, and thus, we have a fugitive on the run. Even though he gave up his passport, it is said that he was still somehow able to board a carnival cruise ship that was bound for Cozumel, Mexico. He got off the ship when it arrived and never reboarded. Despite efforts from international authorities as well as bounty hunters, he has still yet to be located. The last time he was seen was in February of 2018 in Nuevo Leon 
on. In our number two spot today, we have Alejandro Castillo. Alejandro is an American man who was added to the FBI's 10 most wanted fugitives list in October of 2017. He was added to the list after disappearing after taking the life of a woman named Sandy Lai Lee. Sandy was a co worker of his, and it is said that the two might have briefly dated. Basically, apparently, she had lent him some money that he had never repaid. On August 9th, 2016, Alejandro texted Sandy saying that he would like to repay her, and they agreed to meet at a quick trip. Alejandro was driven to this meeting by Amaya Feaster, who is said to be his new girlfriend. It is believed that once at the meeting, instead of repaying her, Alejandro forced Sandy to take out all of the money from her bank account, which is said to have been about $1,000. After this, the pair drove Sandy to a wooded area, where it is said that he then took her life. After this, the pair fled the scene of the crime and drove from North Carolina to Phoenix, Arizona. They then ended up fleeing into Mexico from there. While Amaya turned herself into authorities on October 20th, 2016, Alejandro remains at large and on the run. Despite the years it's been, I hope that one day he is found so he can be brought to justice for this horrible, senseless crime. In our number one spot today, we have Badrash Kumar Patel. This is a man who, in 2015, was in the United States in Hanover, Maryland, with his wife, Palak. It is said that the pair were traveling to visit relatives and that they had both taken a job at a local Dunkin' Donuts that was owned by one of their family members. It was at this location that on April 12th, 2015, it is said that he took the life of his wife. Surveillance footage shows the two of them walking together in the kitchen around 9.30pm that day before they disappear out of view behind some racks that were in the kitchen. Shortly after this, he reappears alone, turns the oven off, and leaves. Authorities believe that this all may have been over an argument where one of the couple wanted to return to India, while the other wanted to stay in the United States. After customers of the store began getting worried when no one came to take their order, they thankfully decided to approach a nearby police officer. The officer went to investigate, and that is when he sadly found her body. The last sighting of him was on April 13th at around 10 a.m. at Newark Penn Station in New Jersey. He had taken a hotel shuttle there and has never been seen since. There is currently a $100,000 reward for information that leads to his whereabouts. It truly is an unimaginable horror, and I hope that this monster is one day brought to justice. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the West Mesa Bone Collector. This is the name used to describe an unidentified serial killer who is said to be responsible for taking the lives of 11 different women whose remains were found buried in the desert of West Mesa in 2009. It is thought that this could be one person, or it could potentially be linked to some sort of group. There have been tips throughout the years, and authorities have worked hard to try and get to the bottom of these crimes, but still, the killer remains at large. There have been a few different suspects throughout the years, but there hasn't been enough concrete evidence to charge anyone with the crimes just yet. What's interesting about this case is that, although the remains were found in 2009, according to authorities, upon examining satellite images, it is believed that the last of the remains Remains were placed there in 2005. Next up, at number nine, we have Ayman Al Zahari. After Osama bin Laden was killed in 2011, Al Zawahari has been the leader of Al Qaeda. The terrorist organization is confirmed to have carried out numerous attacks throughout the world, leading to hundreds if not thousands of deaths, and they have also claimed responsibility for other violent crimes. There is currently a 25 million USD reward for information that leads to his arrest. Moving right along, number eight, we have a Rocco Morabito. Morabito is an Italian mobster and something of an escape artist when it comes to evading the law. He has been on the run for 23 years, starting back in 1994. Is this real life right now? How can we not capture this guy? We have so much advanced technology. And he's been on the run for his crimes related to drug trafficking, the mafia, and other serious crimes. His wiki actually never revealed what his crimes were. They were probably too horrifying. But if we're dealing with the mafia, I can only imagine what he's done. I've watched a lot of movies. <laughs> well, he was ultimately caught in 2017 with a bunch of guns, credit cards, cell phones, money. But like I said at the beginning of this, he's an escape artist. So he was able to escape again in 2019. So we're talking just last year and right now he's still at large. 
Number seven spot today goes to George Luis Mendoza Cardenas. Cardenas is a Mexican drug lord, one of the leaders of the Jalisca New Generation Cartel. This cartel provides marijuana, heroin, meth, and cocaine to some of the biggest cities in the US. He has been wanted since 2016, but also for the gruesome murder of a family of six. He was arrested in 2008, but was mysteriously released with no explanation. My explanation might be drug money. He might have bought his way out of this one and, and threats. He probably threatened a lot of people. He has been wanted by the DEA since 2016, and he's somewhere out there. Our number six spot goes to Nemesia Asegura Cervantes. Cervantes is the official leader of the Jalisca New Generation Cartel, above even Cardenas. He is the most wanted fugitive in Mexico right now, and the government is offering 30 million MXN just for the information that leads to his arrest. He is actually suspected on ordering the murder of 17-year-old YouTube star Juan Rosales, and this is after he made a video making fun of him. Halfway through this list now, we have Anders Cameroon Ostevig Dale. Dale has been blacklisted since 2014 by the US Department of State, but he has been wanted ever since 2012 for his connections with Al Qaeda. After breaking off contact with his wife, he has been reportedly missing since 2012, and he is suspected to have received explosives training, specifically in making bomb belts, improsives, explosives, and car bombs. He became wanted in 2012 after planning the bombing of the 2012 Olympic Games. Next up, number four, we have Hayat Bomendini. Bomendini is wanted for being the accomplice to her husband, Amidi Kalabali, after he shot and killed a police officer at the Montarog shooting. He also took hostages and killed four civilians in the Port de Vences Sage, and this is where he was killed by police. So although her husband was killed by police, she's still out there somewhere and she's still very dangerous and she is still wanted. In at number three is David Durham. Durham has been wanted by the FBI since 2011 after shooting and seriously injuring a cop at a rooting traffic stop. To this day, nobody is sure why he reacted the way he did. Did he commit other crimes? that he didn't want to get caught for. His friends and family said that he has been on painkillers and seemed paranoid leading up to the shooting. He disappeared immediately after shooting the police officer and even after extensive search, there has been no confirmed sightings of him. I mean, he's now become like the Loch Ness Monster. Like, where is he? Coming at number two is Eugene Palmer. Palmer is one of the most recent additions to the FBI's top 10 wanted fugitives list. And this is after his son and daughter-in-law separated and the DIL got a restraining order against her husband. She and Palmer got into multiple heated arguments. This escalated until one day when Palmer started shooting at her from a distance and then provided one last close range shot that killed her. He has been on the run ever since that happened and no traces of him has ever been found other than the pickup truck that was used to flee the scene, but he has not been seen. And wrapping our number one spot, we have Xavier Dupont de Legons. Legons is currently at large for murdering and burying his entire family behind their home. Is this real life right now? Well, in early April of 2011, he shot and killed his wife, their four children, ages 20, 18, 16, and even 13, and their family dog. Their bodies were found a few weeks later under their porch. And despite 900 suspected sightings of this guy since, he has never been caught. This guy has become a mastermind. Well, there you guys have it. That was your top 10 scariest people who are still in hiding. Hopefully none of us come across him. And hopefully these people are caught really soon. 